Hey everybody, just in case you're listening at work, or you've got someone with sensitive ears, or little ones in the room, and really, why would you? You already know this is an explicit podcast, you're smarter than that. We just wanted to give you a warning. This episode has discussions including erotic situations and sexual acts. Enjoy at your own risk. Now, on with the show. Hello, and welcome to Creating Canon with your hosts, A.J. Hamilton and Nick Pappas. Um, I'm so sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but I would prefer if you used my, um, what I consider my professional stage name, which would be Nicholas C. Pappas. Oh yes, of course, of course I will. And Dick Pappas. I, um... I am very okay with that. As Fair far enough. As like, yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, we could we we could try that out for well, something. You know, you know, I think in particular because of what we are covering today. Yeah. Dick Pappas feels like. I think it's it appropriate. Be, yeah. 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 And what are we covering today, AJ? <laughs> we are covering on creating canon. Oh, this lovely, lovely movie from 1960. 768-ish, we'll, Yeah, we'll depending say. on what, where what you source look in. you look. It's yeah. called Inga. Yeah, this oh is one of the first ever canon movies mm-hmm. that was, like, released by canon. Right. Um, and, look, I'm just going to be honest. AJ yep. and I, before noon on a Tuesday, mm. sat down and watched some Swedish softcore porn. I wouldn't have had it any other way. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. me either, me either. But like, when I when it gets down to it, that's exactly what we did today. <laughs> um, How did you spend your Tuesday morning? Huh? Yeah, yeah, doing something productive. Yeah, or watching Swedish softcore porn or, with your good friend. It splits people down the middle. Yes. What would you rather be doing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I guess just hop into the plot, right, of this movie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, why not? Because, look, let's be honest, for a Swedish softcore porn... This has more plot than This is very plot-heavy. Yeah. So, all right, here's, like, the quick version. Ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, please, yes. When Inga's mother dies, (gasps) she is sent to live with her aunt Greta. In order to be with the man she desires, Greta pawns Inga off on her wealthy suitor. But Inga's affection lies only with... The same man that Greta desires. What? What? Yeah. And in there, we're missing the fact that Inga is only 17. 17 years old. Greta, her aunt, is like 32. 32. Yep. And they all act like she is... Ancient. Ancient. Like, she they're is like... A, she is a spent... Uh, spinster. Spent nickel. Yeah, yeah. she is. No, th- yeah. She is, she is not worth nothing this, anymore, yeah. apparently. This movie except for her idiot. intellect. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. But no man wants intellect <laughs> um, in the world of this movie. Right, yes. Um, it seems. Well, actually, it's kind of not it's, true, because Einar okay. wants... Intellect and sex? Well, but specifically... Oh my god, we're going to just hop right into this one, I think. Okay, the first thing to talk about is, this is called Inga. But she is not introduced until 18 minutes into the movie? Yeah, she's got like a 30 second scene at the beginning. Right, where she's admiring little toys. But at that point, we don't know who she is, or what she's doing. And essentially, I would argue that... I forgot about that scene, by the way. Right? Uh, I until mean, you actually you pointed it out. Yeah, we. I was like, oh, but we've seen her before. Like you say, we didn't know who she was, what she played in the movie. Uh, I mean, if you're walking into this, also the second scene immediately after. Oh, so co- good! Like smash cuts into a disco scene of Swedish youngins. Yeah, dancing like crazy. Yeah. So, and and that's one of the things. Like, if we talk about like creating canon like yes. right off the bat I, I gotta say like that moment was incredible like that juxtaposition of like the 17 <laughs> year old Inga playing with toys with essentially I mean like a music box playing behind her yeah right smash cut to this like swinging sex party that's happening mm-hmm. straight down to in the sex party the one of like after they're all dancing mm-hmm. someone goes Oh, we've got a trial. We got a trial, and they put a girl on trial for being a virgin. Virgin, right? They and, find her guilty, and her uh, her punishment is the execution 
or the sex execution. The sex execution, AJ, that is gone. You're welcome, everyone. You're welcome for. I mean, it's not every day that you get to use the word sex execution. Um, the sex execution of a virginity, which happens yeah, it, right in front of the rest it, of the party. It's it's kind of like a, a cheap eyes wide shut. <laughs> A little bit, a little bit like that. It is how (laughs) Stanley Kubrick watched this movie and was like, you know what? Put them in some fucking plague masks. Right? There you go. call it a goddamn day. We're in. We are in. The first first two minutes was the complete inspiration. Absolutely. Um, And then we're introduced to Greta... And Carl. Carl. Right? Who are real squares in the corner, man. They are they're not they're not drinking. They're not drinking. Well, it's because, and I quote, Carl looks at Greta and says, oh. you, we're not drinking. And Greta's like, No, we I gotta should. go home soon or something. And Carl goes, Oh, that's right. I forgot that your sister died. <laughs> <laughs> Which that, that is that is um uh non sequitur on par with I got the news back today. It's definitely cancer Seriously, from the room. That is a room moment. I mean, to Jesus. be fair, though, in its original Swedish, that might mean might have been might yeah. might have been really well written. But yeah. we're going off of some subtitles that just sent us in hysterics. And in I a will say, way. I don't love the actor who plays Carl. You don't love the actor, AJ. The whole time you were, every time he came on screen, you were like, I hate that guy. Oh, was I? Has has I he ever even kissed a human that. before? What is wrong with him? I don't speak Swedish, but I can tell he's terrible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. I guess that gave yeah, it yeah, away. Yeah. Now, I think that's... funny enough, I thought that was all in my head. No, that was all uh, out loud. Um, apologies. Yeah. So <laughs> what we find out is that Carl is a young book writer. Uh, or novelist, just writer. writer. We don't know. Um, he, he says his they'll be on Easy Street when his first story comes out. So yeah. I... Maybe he's contributing to uh, McSweeney's or something? I don't know. Well, that was actually... This is, again, one of those interesting... Because this is one of those things where, like... Again, I don't speak Swedish. No, me neither. Um, and it's clear that you don't. From, what? Yeah, Did exactly. Did Hersky yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. It's pretty close. Um, but when he said stories... Yeah. Uh, like, when the... The oh, subtitles of stories. The Buchen. actual the the the, the, the novel booking novel booking novel yeah, 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 yeah. Which made me think, like, oh, he's a novelist. Huh. They just you like it was a weird. So translation. 1968 wasn't great for like cross promotions of movies. Yeah, exactly. I guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's entirely possible. So apparently he was a novelist, and um, Greta. But he's like 21. She's he's 21. He's ba- barely 21. He's barely said. 21, and Greta, who is 32, oh, is wait. a haggard maid. She's 33 because Greta says right. I'm 32, and then her maid yeah. says your next birthday you will be 34. Yes, that's wow. Right. Way to throw her under the bus, oh, yeah, Frida. Seriously. Yeah. Jesus. Frida the Maid. Who Frida the Maid is fucking incredible in this movie, by and the way. It just comes out of nowhere. Just but you know what? Let's let's yes. hold on. Let's just hold off on Frida the Maid. Please, because we're let's, talking about Carl. Let's talk yeah, let's just let's just get the, the basic relationships down. So mm-hmm. Greta is in love with Carl. Greta has tons of money, yeah. but she's wasting it all on Carl. Buying him, yeah, buying him a, a car, a boat, allowances. Yeah, uh, probably, probably renting that apartment, renting for the him. apartment for yeah. him. And in walks in Einar, who is he looks like he's like I think in the movie he's supposed to be like forty five or so, Maybe. but he looks like a seventeen year old with like great hair <laughs> in like a production of Death of a Salesman at a exactly. high school. Who's like, my name's Willie Loman. <laughs> And I don't want to die because I'm a salesman. Where's Biff and Hap? Um, but Einar, who is very, very rich, is mm-hmm. looking for somebody who is cultured. Yep. And part of it is he's got a thing for very young women who screw things up for him at parties. Right. Yes. So Einar, who is like, he he's, wants he's Greta. The, he's the old friend of Greta's now dead now husband. dead husband, Nils. Also, he seems to be friends with Frida. Yes. I don't know, man. Like, this was so incestuous. It was like there was one main family in all of Sweden. Yeah, and that's it. This was it. This clearly wasn't in metropolitan Sweden. This was 
it, it, they were there's an actual song called middle of nowhere that plays like four times in the movie oh, that's like and um, over and over on the dvd menu yes which, screen jesus christ which we left on far too long <laughs> and it was a, a song it sounds like it's like a donovan song uh-huh. uh which is a an artist from the 70s who like famously oh, did Dirty Dirty Season, Men, of Season of the Witch. Yeah. Love that song. Uh, I do too. And yeah. it's like, it's seriously, it's like, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it's terrible. absolutely su- sung by the lead singer of Pearl Jam. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's, it's an that's odd. That's my Eddie Vedder. <laughs> I'm pretty good at it. It's nice. <laughs> Never been out of nowhere. Yeah. Know. Thank you for indulging us. Yeah. We just that we was... can't stick on anything. Seriously. Uh, um... This movie has a hell of a lot more structure to it than I expected. Absolutely. Um, so he wants... We're, we're at Einar, and Einar essentially wants Greta as his companion. Oh, because his wife is insane, apparently. Yes, and in this Anaheim, we'll never get out. No. And Einar's sister basically comes to Greta and is like, he keeps bringing around 15-year-old girls, trying to fuck him, and then they barf. On, like, Dukes. On Dukes. Or something like that. Yeah, and she was like, we cannot have that. You don't barf on Dukes. (laughs) And Greta was like, (laughs) like, I don't. Only in my fun days. Only in my fun days. And Greta kind of... No, but she was married at 18, so she hasn't really had a... Yeah. Had the child, which is why she is interested in Carl, who's this young kid. Right. It's like, uh, uh, she wants her young life. Greta's now dead husband was into things like opera. and the boring stuff. The boring stuff. Yes. Which is actually a moment in the movie where Greta's like, I'm tired of opera and music (laughs) and things that are cultured. And I would say, I don't know, uh, correct me if I've already said this, but Greta... You've already said this. Damn it. Well, those words, but not in this order, I promise. Um, Greta is presented to us in in a typical movie as the protagonist. Yes, absolutely. Right? She is seemingly the lead of the movie. Yeah, I we follow all of her exploits. We are privy to her sort of furtive glances when something happens. We, we, yeah. She is the audience's passage into into the movie. Absolutely. It's weird that it is about Inga, yeah. considering it feels like Greta's movie. You're absolutely mm-hmm. right. At this point, basically, Inga walks in. Was shipped off from wherever her mother died from. Yeah. Also, apparently she has a father, but he's in America? That, that was very confusing. Yeah, that wasn't clear at all. There was a lot of exposition all just dumped Dumps. on us. Uh, just in a very weird situation. Yeah, but, that was not clear at all. No. You're right. You're right. Um, and But when Inga comes in the picture, Greta is like, Oh, this is perfect because... Inga is really well read. She mm-hmm. loves opera. She loves the symphony. All she does is read books, and she's seventeen, which is like the exact it's, thing it's like Einar's a combination looking for. Of the yeah, exactly. Um, so the whole basic plot for the last part of the movie is Greta thinking, "Oh, I know what I'll do is I will keep Carl for myself, mm-hmm. and then Einar can have Inga." Who is everything that he needs. And since I'm supplying her... I will get paid. I will get paid by the... Which we didn't even mention. Like, it's not just that she's going to have companionship to Einar. The sister is going to put her on the books. Yeah, it's like a a pimp situation. It's it's, it's actually like she... Greta becomes payrolled. Yeah. For being... Either providing her own services, services to Einar or Inga's services. Since Inga is uh, but, not in a position to have a role but in, in the company. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus. Yep. Um, but the big catch is that Inga loves Carl. It turns out. And Carl is interested in Inga. Which, yeah, we have one hint in the movie that that is the actual thing. And that is when Inga looks out the window, sees Carl, undresses for him, and then masturbates for him. I don't think she masturbates for him because to she's him. out of the window. Yeah, sorry. Yes, to him. Yeah. To him. Absolutely. Because because he then I don't know if this was just a real obvious metaphor, but he starts revving his engine. Yeah, in his car. In his car. Just rev, rev, rev. And just rev, looks rev, up at the, rev, 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 rev. and then drives away. Yeah. Uh I don't know if this was art or if it was just very ham fisted filmmaking. Yeah. Well that's that's so this is the thing about this movie that like as I'm watching it, well, first of all, it is way better than I thought it was going to be. Agreed, yes. Because I thought it was going to be, like, 
the the Skinamax softcore porn mm-hmm. that like when I was like fourteen, I would find on the channels right. at and, three in the morning. And, and when it would go into the sex scenes, the entire screen would be sort of softer. Yeah, it would, like it would that have weird, that, gauzy, that weird fog, it, fog around yeah. the edges. It's like vaselining the lens, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, um, but I think they not did, a metaphor. I'm pretty sure they did that digitally at that point. But... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, wait, no, I'm too old for that. They probably actually put Vaseline on the lens. I'm Fair enough. Too, yeah. Fair enough. But thank you for trying to make me younger. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the hairpiece is doing it for you. Yeah. Exa- oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, um, well, at least you're not putting in the gray uh, gray streaks in the side that uh, just like I was War. doing. <laughs> um, you know, and that's. Way better than I expected. Sorry, that's where we were at. Right. There are some interesting shots. The sh- and beautifully shot. Actually, to tie in that fogged thing, you yes. pointed out two interesting shots, both happening in the bathroom in the in the shower scene. Inga Inga is showering, mm-hmm. and uh, she is shot through the the fogged glass or the it, what, what, what would tint not tinted glass. What it's is a, that? It's like a textured glass when she's marbled in the shower. Glass. It's like a marbled textured glass, right? That, like. That distorts images when they're far away, but when it comes closer, the images come into focus. Exactly. So there's this really interesting shot where she's showering, and like, of course, it's like all about eroticism. Of like, course, you can see her like rubbing her body and whatnot, mm-hmm. and then she kind of turns her head, and her face comes close to the glass, and it comes, like, it's clear. Yeah, her face becomes clear in the glass. Yes. It's a cool shot. And then after she gets out of the shower, she puts on a towel. And then she, like, is looking into a fogged mirror. But they also seem to either fog the camera or Vaseline the camera. Now, I think we we disagree on this. You, I I think you thought that that was on purpose. I think the camera was in the room while it It was was still foggy. Because I don't think that they could have done that. Uh, I think they did it practically. Mm Mm-hmm. And then they were just like, well, this is still a little steamy, and it's steaming up the uh, the camera, and will wipe off part of the camera. But I think they missed, or it was a happy accident that the bottom was still fogged. But uh-huh. it was an interesting uh, framing method. Yeah. I really liked that. Yeah. What was interesting about it is, mm-hmm. like, essentially it covered Inga's breasts, uh, right? Uh, like, in the way that the half shot... Covered, half covered. But yeah, covered. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, it wasn't like Slight a... Slight modesty. I don't know. Yeah, it wasn't like... <laughs> It's weird, because this is at the time where it's clearly an erotic film. Yes. Um, but it's definitely not, like, porn. Right, right, right. But it's... The nudity is weirdly both gratuitous, but slightly tasteful, if that makes any sense. Like, uh, Yeah, yeah. I don't think... I mean, you've definitely seen worse in yeah. PG... Th- no, rated R movies. Totally. Nowadays. Absolutely. Um, well, that actually... And re- it wasn't forceful or... It walked that interesting line of... Yeah. Well, that wasn't necessarily needed, but it wasn't forcing it down your throat, I suppose. Yeah. Well, I, one of the notes I actually wrote down was that um, this is like... If this were one hour longer... Yeah. It would actually be like... An Academy Award sex comedy, or not, not sex comedy, sex like comedy. erotic film. Jesus Christ! Yeah, um, all like, those silly, all those silly teens, all those silly teens. Um, I, I'm thinking of like the Adrian Lyne films of like Unbreakable mm-hmm. and uh, uh, Fatal Attraction, sure. and like Disclosure, where it's like okay. sex is like the thing mm-hmm. that pushes the script forward, and sure. it's actually erotic, but it's also a movie. Agreed. Um, yeah. Eyes Wide Shut is another great example. Uh, absolutely, where it's like, yeah. And what was crazy about this, too, is all of the sex seemed to be very female positive. Oh, that is interesting, yeah. I would argue that every situation Inga found herself in, mm-hmm. or any of the women in the movie found themselves in, yeah. um, they wanted to be in those situations. And in the one instance where Inga didn't want to be in that situation... She escaped. She escaped, and, and... the man didn't, like... That's very true. Hold her down or force her. Like, he was forceful to begin with, but as soon as she was like, no. He, he was like, fair enough. Yeah, he was like, cool, that's fine. Yeah. No harm, no foul. You know, um, there was no violence towards women There was whatsoever. no violence towards women. There was no uh, coercion. We, well, although... Well, the well, arguably when she's 17, that's hard to explain exactly. But we were actually looking... But Greta at... was the one who's like the most coercion-y of all. That's very and true. And yeah. never actually... Like Einar was definitely in a position where Inga was alone in his be- in her bed, like mm-hmm. in his house, in a bedroom. Right. She was half nude, um, changing for bed, and like he actually like put a robe over her to preserve her modesty. Yep. Um, in a moment, which is ridiculous. I want because, to yes, talk about that scene. Please just get to it. Yeah. 
he in it's a one shot. Yep. It's an it's a very well framed one shot where she is uh, staring at something on the wall or a toy or oh at, at the she was toy. playing with the toys she was playing with the toy right next to the camera yeah uh, as if the camera was looking straight at her face then he comes over puts a robe on her she walks five steps to bed and then takes off the robe it maddened me I don't <laughs> I don't understand why it happened why that was there. Yeah. Again, I think you're right. It was the uh, the uh, modesty thing, but it was a very, very oddly... It was uh, a r- weirdly shot. Yeah. Like, enough that both of us were like, what? what? It just came on. Um, I want to read this quote that just... Please. So this was, movie was written and directed by Joe Sarno, who is a very well-known director... <laughs> Early on for, like, these kinds of, like, soft core... Skin flicks. Skin flicks. No, I'm, that's um, that then, derivative. Well, dismissive. Yeah, very dismissive. There it is. But it, it's it's interesting because uh, he, of course, went on to do, like, hardcore porno. Cool. And we can talk about that, like, the two things separately. Um, <laughs> but an interesting side note about Joe Sarno, sorry, yes, is ahead. the fact that people are starting to research his career... Mm-hmm. to find what else he's directed and um there are all kinds of film uh like the new york underground film festival and like mm-hmm. all kinds of film festivals and like institutions of film we're starting to look at his early work and actually giving it the credit for being well shot well crafted well made and like the work of a filmmaker because i think it's hmm. easy for a thing like inga to be thought of as like oh it's just pornographic especially in the context of that time that's exactly yeah. it in that time it was pornographic sure. but when we look at it now it's mm-hmm. actually not cuz i have seen like if you saw red sparrow oh, red sure. sparrow is way worse as far as like gratuitous sex and mm-hmm. violence and sexualization towards women and yada da da interesting um Yada da 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 that, but you understand what I mean. Yada yada yada. Yada yada yada. That, that is appropriate. Uh, that's like I shouldn't. I shouldn't be yada da da dying that, but like no, but it, that's not the point of yeah. the, the. But but Inga does not have that, and actually, there's this quote that Joe Sarno says. Where, yeah. Um, he says, "My point of view is more or less always from the woman's point of view. Huh. The fairy tales that my films are based on are from the woman's point of view. I stress the efficacy of women for themselves. In general, I focus on the female orgasm as much as I can." Oh. Women have much more imagination than men. I think sex is supposed to be a lot of fun. And that was very clear in this because it was never about the dude's pleasure. No, it really wasn't. It was always about the female's pleasure. Yeah. Straight down to when anyone, basically, like that one guy, mm-hmm. Carl, he has a couple of sex scenes in the movie where... I hate Carl. <laughs> do, does everyone <laughs> does, know does, that? Do we know that? Um, but Carl always, like, performed cunnilingus mm-hmm. first. Yep. Always, well, always, always, and then maybe did something. Maybe did something of. else. Who knows? But it was, and it was always on the female enjoying it. Um, it was all on the female's face as well. Yes, even that's that, exactly right. Even the part where the that strange woman who was, I didn't. In- it's interesting because, like, one could argue that she was. I'm going to use a quote. I'm okay. Use the term like she was um, no motivation. She was slutty. Mm-hmm. She was in there for sex, and it didn't make sense. But I think you could also argue that like she was a woman who uh, knew what she wanted sexually. She and was she like, went I want it. that guy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's very interesting that everyone was kind of of a bad person, except for except maybe for Inga. Inga. Except for Inga. Who was? I mean, should be. I don't know. If, well, she was in. Inno- she was an innocent. She was an innocent. She was. She was virginal in the the whole situation. And and to, to the point where mm-hmm. the original Swedish title is. Oh yes. Jag an Oskund. Good I pronunciation. Butchered that. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but translated, that is me, a virgin. Huh. Again, confusing that it's not from her perspective. The movie. The movie. Yes, 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 yes. Because yeah. both titles are from her perspective. Exactly. Yeah. Um, she's she's more of, you know, like the subject, not yeah. the, uh, you know, like... Uh, That's actually a, a perfect way to put it. She is the... Yeah. I mean, she's, she's the one being observed or affected by everybody else in the movie. Yeah. She has very little agency on her own. Yes, exactly. To the point where at the end of the movie, Inga goes to Greta and is like, I'm in love with a man uh, and I want him. And Greta's like, and this is again, like this really interesting moment of like um, sex positivity Mm -hmm. where Greta basically is like, hey, 
it's okay. Like it's okay to desire sex. You're a woman. Go get it. It's mm-hmm. fine. Yes. Now the key is that Greta thought she was talking about Enar. I guess where Inga was talking about Carl. I was very, very confused about that whole sequence of events to the extent that it almost seemed like farce to me. There is it was because yes. First of all, she is taken by some local girls to a barn mm-hmm. where there are she a, being Inga. She being Inga, sorry. Some girls her own age take her to a barn where there are three boys I, her age. Yeah. They're waiting, just being like, hey, we going to do this? There's no uh, words exchanged. Not really. Between It's just like, you, you, you're going to do this? So that's when she actually escapes from the advances on her. Yeah. And runs home and says, a boy or a man or some, however it was translated, mm-hmm. wanted to have sex with me. And I wanted to, and I still want to, or something. I thought when she said, should I have had sex or whatever, and then Greta says, no, go have sex with somebody. I thought she was going to go back to that barn guy to be like, oh man, this is my youth. I'm I'm not going to go with uh, Enar because he's a weird old rich guy. You're absolutely right. And then she ends up going to to Carl. Carl. Yeah, that was not clear. No. I I agree that, and this is what I mean where it's like, could yeah. you imagine if this movie had an hour more filling in... 30 minutes more. 30 minutes even. more filling in, like, just yeah. those, like, small plot things that don't make sense. Yes. And also really adding some motivation and gravitas to yeah. the situation. I mean, it's not soap opera-y. No. I wouldn't say. I think that, especially the fact that there are a couple of decent actors in this in this movie, it's, it's not... Except for uh, Carl. Fuck Carl, man. Seriously, Kasten Lassen, he, this was his only movie. And it makes sense why. It absolutely does. Yeah. He's just like... He was never he, cast in again. He's got a weird, like, shit-eating, like, smirk <laughs> during the whole thing. Just like, hmm, I get to make up with some girls, and it's pretty... Hmm. And I don't know what is going on with his face, or his, his kissing, or his... It's his like, kissing was is, I think horrid. He almost looks at... The, the camera a bunch of times. There's a guy who in the, looks like er, young Eric Idle who looks directly at the camera because he doesn't know what else to fucking do during this weird macabre party scene with Enar and his weird friends. And Inga's there. And yeah. Inga's there. And this guy is just like sort of slightly reacting wrong well, to most of the things that are being said what's weird about that moment is like the two women mm-hmm. who are uh it's um greta and Enar's sister are, yeah. are like walk up like so it's, first of all it's greta and him having conversation yeah and then Enar's sister walks in and greta and Enar's sister have this very private conversation yeah with him standing there exactly. and i'm gonna tell you i've been this guy at a party before <laughs> where like you're talking to someone someone else comes up and is like oh my god did you hear so-and-so broke up with their boyfriend or whatever <laughs> and then you're just like uh do i react to this do i leave or do i stand here sure but I don't think he had permission to leave the shot. So he just stood there with his drink like, uh, uh, mm, that is what is on the wall over there. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, just giving like every option. Yeah. To the, yeah. Uh, I gave you a lot of, I gave you a lot of looks, director. What do you think? I was mostly acting with my eyes. I was like, uh, Joe, I was acting with my eyes. What'd you think? How'd you, how'd that um, go? <laughs> but, um. I just want to go back to, like, you know, the, the half an hour. Like, yeah. if that had this half an hour filled in, I think this could oh, have been, like... absolutely. ...something very, very, very different of a film. You were talking more about the the filmmaking itself. Just it's, the visual... It's actually very good. We, we were talking about the scene where Enar is putting Inga to bed, and there's a fascinating scene where she winds up a little marching toy, and the shot, the, the, the camera is set on the ground, shooting... Her in the background, the toy in the midground, and and it's marching towards the camera. Yeah, it's a it's a really interesting. It's a it's almost as if shot. I would say again, I question if any of this is metaphor, because apparently Joe sounds like a decently thoughtful fellow. Oh my god, that's time marching forward. Oh my god, and it's her innocence marching away. Exactly, like the toy is marching away from her. Absolutely. What? 
I think we could... Holy shit, AJ! If we, that was fucking brilliant. If this was assigned to a, a film class, I think that it would not be uh, derisively met. No, I don't think so. You I, know, I agree. I, uh, this, this was a... Again, like you say, it's not gratuitous. It well, walks the line. It walks the line, because it's not gratuitous in the same way that, like, look, there's other it's, canon it's, movies it's, we're going to watch. It's where... very much more than, say, uh, the Zeffirelli uh, uh, Romeo, and, Romeo Juliet. and Juliet. I guess the, the sex scenes and the masturbation scenes and stuff like that are are focused on longer, mm-hmm. but it, it's it's not to a, a, what a is pornographic it? extent. What does it say? It's like, we're going to watch some, eventually, with the canon movies, yes. we're going to get to some, like... Uh, Charles Bronson movies of the 80s like Death Wish 2 oh, where it's Jesus. going to be gratuitous boobs for boobs sake. You're right, yeah. Um and horrible like, sexual acts. Sexual rape scenes Ugh. for and and then like trying to sexualize women during those kinds of moments which okay. will be yeah. gratuitous and like horrible yeah. in 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 any standards but especially by today's standards, right? Yeah. Where like I'm talking about like movie making standards. Like yes, follow my, I hope, sure. Yeah. Just want to hope to follow, <laughs> just to follow the thread there. Um, but you're absolutely right. So like, this is not gratuitous I, in that way. It's, it's, it's showing a realistic act. Yes. Especially, I know we keep to go jumping back to it, but the masturbation scene is thematically relevant to this girl losing her innocence, being driven by her sexuality and yet not, be, being separated by that glass, yeah. looking down on the the man of her desire, and uh, and then resisting. Well, and she knows too. When I actually wrote down this little note on, yeah. on that scene where, because she kind of undresses for him, mm-hmm. takes her shirt off, yeah, um, stands there nude in the window for a second, turns mm-hmm. around, takes like a step towards camera, yeah, and she has this smile on her she, face. That smile, yeah, that is like realizing her power and her she, sexual power, and she at is that in moment. fucking control of yeah. that moment. Yeah. She knows exactly like what she is doing. Yeah, and and that's what the fascinating thing about that masturbation moment comes from is like. Yeah. What I read in that moment is like she is in control mm-hmm. and she is actually turned like she turns herself on in that moment by her power by her power uh, maybe not even him exactly coming into her own and and you're right like I know we keep going back to that scene yes and we probably sound like a couple of gross guys but like when you think about it going back to like 1967 68 mm-hmm. women having pleasure on screen is not something that you would expect to see no. and women masturbating on screen like that's well, a thing that not. dudes yeah. do women don't do that you don't see either of it in that time, that time period. of yeah. that time period but the thing that i was gonna like really hit home on like not only do those two things yeah but also did you ever see this documentary called this film is not yet rated gosh it, yeah a while ago a long time ago yeah one of the things that was so striking about that movie was they were showing oh the one about the mpaa that's right yes, yes, yes. yeah the mpaa yeah. sorry yeah that when movies depicted women enjoying sex, mm-hmm. especially cunnilingus mm. or masturbation, like female masturbation, yes, th- it would be rated NC-17 almost every single time. Got it, yeah. Whereas they would show very similar things that were um, men enjoying sex, mm-hmm. men getting blowjobs, or men um, masturbating. Sure. And it would be rated R. And they would actually mm-hmm. show these scenes side by side where it was like, why is this rated NC-17? Sure. This is rated R. When we kind of like peel the layers of that back, mm-hmm. like this is this is doing that same thing where again, I keep going back to like female empowerment and female sexuality. Like Well and it's doing like the a, exact opposite. It's disenfranchisement. It's yes, female disenfranchisement. It's, and it's but and it's sex positive, right? Yeah. It's Well, I mean I, I by that I meant uh it was uh the disenfranchisement by the MPAA. Yes, or, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, no, this is absolutely... I was actually following you on that oh, one when good. you said that. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to make that clear. Yeah. Uh, but this movie itself was uh, absolutely sex positive and female positive. The females, as much as uh, Enar thought that he had power uh, because of his money, yes. it was the sister who was, like, uh, doing the deal. Yeah. Greta was controlling Inga... And Inga was almost controlling uh, the dummy, Carl. Carl. Because Carl is sort of like this 
idiot spoiled kid and i can see in that relationship uh-huh. were they to continue for any amount of time i think inga would surpass him would be bored inga would be absolutely bored would be yeah. bored and and that's not to say because it almost sounds like we're talking about this in a way too i want to be really clear mm-hmm. that like it's not like the women in this well Greta is conniving, and so is oh, so yes. is in in our sister. Sure, but like Inga is not conniving, and Car- like, no, and I'm saying I'm Carl. saying powerful. Yeah, well, and I just wanted to make in that, a way, yes, that no, really the, important the distinction between those two women and the, her. And Frida is great. Yes. Oh my God, I I actually have a note. Is like, what is Frida? Because I. <laughs> Frida is the I don't know the maid. Um, she's the maid at of one Greta. point, but she also gives them massages in a full massage room that they must have on site. And she is dressed in like the like a nurse's gown yeah. that I've seen people give she massages in before to give them that massage. Yes, I was saying that I also she thought is, she was a mom. I thought that that was her mom too. Yeah, but I think she was just a maid. Uh, hired help. Hired help, uh, and she to me. Felt like a mixture between Alice from Brady Bunch <laughs> and Alfred from Batman. Yes, because yes. I think that if she ever went on a caper, Frida would be right behind him, helping him out. Frida, Frida was was absolutely my favorite part of this movie. Yeah, and there was one scene where, again, she kind of got caught in the background between a private conversation <laughs> between Greta and Ingrid or Ingra, Inga. Inga, yes. And Frida just Those smiles faces. and laughs. Yep. <laughs> um, to where I actually said to AJ during the movie, I was like, is she getting paid by the smile in this Pretty movie? Pretty sure because she is. this is insanity. <laughs> just smiling at anything and everything. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down, Frida. Um, it ain't that funny. Oh, God. Um, so I guess then, I it's weird because I think like, I think we both thought we would not like this movie. Yeah, no, I, I, I thought this was going to be schlock. Yeah. I, I honestly did. I thought it was going to be hard to, like, like difficult to suffer mm-hmm. through it. Yeah. And at the end of the day, weirdly, my reaction to it is, I wish it were longer, mm-hmm. and and then just presented as an erotic drama in the style of, like, an Adrian Lyme movie yes. from the late 80s, early 90s. I- I can see how this would, f- like, how people would want to throw this in, like, the dustbin of movie history. Of course has like a as a simple like porn film but it's it really isn't it's no it's really weird to advocate for it here's the thing there have been a lot of interesting films recently about children finding their own uh way in life uh call me by your name and ladybird yeah both both had very strong just complicated leads that were uh, 17 years old, Yeah, ironically. I would actually love to see this brought forward and sort of uh, modernized. Do you think they would ruin it? Or do you think in the right hands they would be able to make something on this uh, this level, but... That's a good uh, question. But just, maybe we could do it. Maybe we could do it. Maybe this could be our maybe canon this film. Is, maybe this is the canon film. <laughs> well, it's interesting that you say that, because well, one of the things I was thinking of while I was watching this movie mm-hmm. is, number one, just the fact that, like, you throw something in a foreign language. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, classes it up immediately. And, yeah, well, it classes it up and it makes it feel... It elevates it, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking that if you said this was a modern film, mm-hmm. like if it was made today, threw it up at like the Lemley in Hollywood. Yes. I don't know if the Lemley Hollywood's even open, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Lemley in the Hollywood area, Pasadena, yes, whatever. Yes, of course. I was being really super area specific. That's fine. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Charles Lemley. Anyways. Was the creator of Universal Studios. Oh, boy. There's a franchise There's of a, uh, yeah. of small art house film movies. Anyway. I'm just going to throw my head against Good the wall. Anyway. Yeah, buddy. Um, the thing was that I was going to say was the fact that, like, if you threw this up at a Lemley yeah. and say it takes, like, it was shot today, mm-hmm. but written like, but but it takes place in the '60s, or late '60s, early '70s. Sure, and didn't tell anybody that it was from that time period. I would, you know, dollars to donuts here that people yeah. would watch it and be like, "That was incredible!" It was a story about a woman coming of age. I, I'm willing to bet it would actually trick people now. Yeah, um, if you didn't yeah. talk about it as like Swedish softcore porn, its original intention. People would dive in further than we have on this podcast to the metaphor to the uh, nuance of it yeah i i agree and i think that i don't know that's partially what is so fascinating about it i am so surprised we are talking this long on this movie 
when we watched the uh, the original, well, in, in the pilot, we saw clips of Inga. It was sort of pushed aside as uh, uh, dismissed. Yes, almost. And uh, and and I expected to do the same. Yeah. And here we are. And here we are. Yeah. Well, oh, to get back to your question about sure, if we would could they do fuck it. it up today, right? I think where it would get fucked up mm-hmm. is if you set it in America. Oh, yeah. I think you would Agreed. have to keep like if they remade it in Sweden or yep. France, sure, um, even Mexico. Oh, uh, yeah. It would be a very different kind of movie. Very much so. Um, because it would probably come with a different kind of stamp on top of it. Mm-hmm. If it was made here, it would have to be super, super fucking indie. Uh, I don't think there's a way you can mainstream this movie without ruining it. No, you're absolutely right. And um, it is very sordid. It had to be weird for that time mm-hmm. that people would be pawning off their nieces for money. Yes. Like, that's disturbing already. And, you know, how how could that even be explained nowadays? It's tough, it, because she is objectified. Like, that's the weird thing, because she, at the end of the day, even though it is so positive in so many ways, yeah. Inga, at her core, mm-hmm. is still objectified by her aunt, by the men sure. around her. Yes. She doesn't have as much power as we're giving her credit for, necessarily. Yeah. Really. She does, but she does. Like, it's weird. Yeah. It skirts a line it really does this almost seems like something that would be in a uh, a shakespeare subplot you know yes. almost yeah you know the selling off of a the, of a daughter to uh, to a to a duke to get favor oh. from uh the royalty i don't know yeah i don't know it's very odd you could there's so many ways you could go with this so Absolutely. i think just to just to canonize like what are we canonizing yes. about it yes indeed um some of the things, the shots. I think we talked about the mm-hmm. shots, like how gorgeous they are. Were there any other, uh, any of the other shots? I can't think of any stood out to me. They were all quality. Yeah, I don't think there was anything really I else think that, that was like shot of her in the window uh, with uh, with Carl. Yeah, was a really great shot. Like mm-hmm. I, I actually thought that was a really interesting shot. I actually liked the way a lot of the shopping sequence was shot except for it was so much like a Beatles movie it, yeah there was felt... something very and and also and the, the score clearly only had one street that they were allowed to shoot yes. on um so they <laughs> used different that angles. street from every angle <laughs> um but I think at its core it was mm-hmm. well like well shot and interestingly sh- uh, paced in that moment yeah I actually really like the shot of when Inga was running out of the barn and the boy ran out of the barn behind her. Oh, directly on, straight on, but a wide shot. That yeah. was interesting. Yeah, um, it was. It was actually well filmed. Like mm-hmm. overall, it was definitely well filmed. So yes. I think that's. I mean, that seems pretty obvious of any good movie is well filmed, but sure. like to keep looking at some of these things of like this could be thrown in the dustbin of history, but we should actually take some time to think about like it was actually crafted well. Mm-hmm. I think. You know, the idea that you throw something in a foreign language and it'll elevate anything. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. So just maybe a scene or two yeah. we could throw into our, our canon movie. Just like some subtitles. Yeah. Class up the joint. Yeah, Class it absolutely. up. Absolutely. Class it up. The juxtaposition of innocence and the teen party I thought was really fascinating. Well, both of the teen parties. Yeah. Well, the were... smash cuts. I mean, like, there yeah. were smash cuts that were like, whoa! They just dropped the music out from certain scenes Uh, we're done with that moving on to the next thing yeah because you actually said that too that i thought was really and it actually wasn't into one of those party scenes it was a very it was like a swelling song at one point i think it might have actually been the scene with the wind-up toy and Mm. then right into the next scene yes 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 it was silent i was like where's the l cut yeah jesus like have the music fade away into that next else. scene but yeah that was that was very odd to me yeah and that was the only jarring thing that didn't seem like it was supposed to be jarring but i want to throw out there yeah, i don't talk know about jarring though like isn't losing a virginity jarring in its own like that that moment where you go from mm-hmm. and it's so stupid that we this is obviously <laughs> like an american <laughs> thing of like we, we put an importance on virginity and we track virginity mm-hmm. as a thing that brings you from like childhood to adulthood sure but i do know that every time and it still happens to this day sometimes where something will happen and i am violently shook into remembering that like yeah. i am no longer a child i am an adult yeah <laughs> um and that is as violent as the music dropping out going dead silent and all of a sudden we're somewhere else and something else <laughs> 
maybe I'm giving the movie way too much Fair credit. Enough. But... Fair enough. Um, <laughs> well, and and this is interesting though that virginity in every culture is sort of uh, elevated. Yeah. Into something else. Like, maybe there are less prudish societies than puritanical America. What? No. Yeah, a little bit. Do you want to hit the taglines? Because I think these are fun. Yeah, let's uh, let's do the taglines. First one, from Sweden, the classic female concept. I uh, I don't don't get it. I don't get it either. The second one, the sensation that started it all. Um, Well, she's the sensation. She is the sensation. Well, I think the movie... So, one of the things that we kind of neglected to mention because we were talking about everything else yes. is um, Joe Sarno was known for sex exploitation films like sex yep. exploitation films really 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 well known for it <laughs> and um, kind of like kicked off that sort of movie oh, um, interesting. more so than perhaps anyone else so mm-hmm. they're probably trying to tap into the idea that like Inga was one of those first, like, super sexploitation films. Yeah. Even though it's not really super sexploitation. Again, not really. And then, I'm going to set the scene. Please. For this last tagline. It was on the trailer, (laughs) and it's just intercut shots of Inga masturbating. Yeah. And then... For almost the whole scene, Like, like like. five minutes. Like, this trailer's... Well, it felt like it was five minutes long, because it was... The trailer was gratuitous. Do you want to talk about gratuitous? Agreed. Agreed. The trailer was gratuitous. Yeah. It's like... Well, that's what they were selling. Right. Yeah. So, um... Inga's masturbating, and it cuts intercuts of shots of like her dreaming about sex, and it shows like all kinds or, of and, sex and, scenes and, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then masturbating, even sex, stuff that we didn't even see in the movie, in the like movie. stuff that wasn't in the movie. Yeah, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Screen goes white, and then on the screen, three words, which are Inga is coming. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. That happened. Hilarious. That good, happened. Good job, trailer makers. Oh boy, boy, you are clever, clever folks. Um, movie made 1.8 million at the U.S. box office. That's in not 68. Bad. That's pretty that's, darn good. Yeah, yeah. Can't complain. No, I mean for that type of movie. And did did they have to make any? I know that at some point they had to make edits. Well, did know, they have to make edits in America? That I don't have an answer to. It's okay. really hard to find. I know yeah. like um, in Italy they made edits. Basically every country they made edits. The movie was banned or parts of it were were heavily edited. Yeah. Um, but what were the three main edits to get it down what, to viewable? Uh, in, well, in Italy, uh-huh. I can talk about Italy. Uh, sure. The three edits were there was the virgin trial in the beginning that had to the be cut out. The sex execution. The sex execution, uh. which is fascinating on its own in that it's like three seconds it's not only is it three seconds but it also really is the core thematically of what the entire movie is about right yeah, like yeah she is virgin she has to lose her virginity unacceptable it's unacceptable and you know boom like that's what kind of the whole thing about inga yeah. is also the girl playing the judge in that trial had a mop on her had head. a mop on her head yeah. clearly that was that was dirty incredible. it was very dirty the second thing that they really had to cut was mm-hmm. the masturbation scene because, of course, women sure. cannot have pleasure. Um, illegal. Illegal. And then the third scene that they really had to cut was the last scene where Carl went down on Inga. Um, oh. That, sexual, uh, that hmm. sexualization of that scene. Sure. Um, so, again, like, those were the three big things. Contextually in time, Yeah. just to throw this out there, um, Deep Throat, which was... Well, that's one of the first, like, real porno films that were shown popular throughout the United States of America. Um, There are claims that it made as much as 600 million in its run. Dang. Um, Nobody knows the truth because, like, that movie did not have, like, a real box office run that way. And Deep Throat was 72. Okay. So four years before Inga. So I don't think Deep Throat ever gets made if Inga is not made. Um, Yeah, I guess so. And and Deep Throat was confirmed for something like... there There was a really interesting documentary by Ron Howard called Inside Deep Throat. So it might not have been Ron Howard. It might have been Brian Grazer, who was Ron Howard's producing partner. Right, yes. Um, but anyways, they confirmed that it made uh, at least $50 million for sure. Wow. As much as $600 million. And that's 72 money. Yeah. Um, which is a lot. Um, and then, like, one other thing that I want to talk about when it comes to, like, canon. Mm-hmm. And I think it captures this film. And it captures Joe Sarno. It's a Sarno quote mm. that I really loved. And I think, when I think of the spirit of canon, perhaps... And when I think of the spirit of what we should be thinking about when we talk about, like, what are we going to do yeah. for creating canon, Joe Sarno's quote is, I was born a rebel, 
In film, I get outside of the acceptable framework as often as possible. I think that is what a filmmaker's goal should be, to get outside of what, at the time, is the established framework. And there's something about that that I think is beautiful. I agree. That is a... Of course you have to not just make the same old thing over and over again. Even if you're not breaking the entire established framework, you have to attempt something different, something that we haven't seen yet. And I know that our conceit in this uh, podcast is that we're trying to make something based on the canon collection. Mm -hmm. But I think we're trying to figure out how to use what these people have taught us yes. to make something new, to break the mold. I think that's absolutely right, because I think what Canon did and why Canon was so exciting for so many people and still is, mm -hmm. is they constantly broke the mold. Part of it is because they didn't know the rules and what the mold was. Exactly. So they just did whatever the fuck they wanted to do. But he was purposely doing that. But it seems like he was purposefully doing that. Yeah. And I think that, to me, like that should be our sweet spot. And, yeah. and what's weird about this is like Joe Sarno went on to be... Just a hardcore porn director, and that is something that I don't find fascinating or interesting for the most part. No. I find it disturbing more than anything else. Right. And disappointing for him. Disappointing for him. Because if he had the skills as a director to Which create he clearly this, did. Yeah. He could have done so much more. It, wait. Something that I didn't even uh, ask. Is he Italian? No, he's a, uh, well, he might be originally Italian, but he was born in uh, Brooklyn. Uh, oh. Red, Red Hook, I believe. Yeah, I should have asked that. I was yeah. I was like, wait, how did he even get on this? Yeah, Red Hook, New this York. project. Well, that is interesting. Well, he got on this project because the guys at the time who, he, he had directed a few softcore porn, like softcore. Right. Yeah. I keep saying softcore porn because that's not really what it is. It's no. like these erotic softcore films of the early 60s. Erotic films. Erotic yeah, films. Yeah, is enough. Like his first like four or five mm -hmm. movies, um, Sin in the Suburbs, The the Bed and How to Make It, Okay, were like two huge hits. Mm -hmm. He then, uh, the guys who um, owned Canon, yep. who started Canon Film Group, Yep. came to him and said, we want to make this movie in Sweden because we can get by making it there. Okay, sure. Um, and they made Inga. I said Italian, didn't I? You did. You did. That's okay. Well, Sarno sounds Jesus like an Italian Christ. name, so yeah. um, I followed where you was got there. Was he Sweden? Was, was, was he, he Sweden? Sweden? Was he all of Sweden? He was all of Sweden. And it should be noted, too, that Inga is the first of a trilogy, The Seduction of Inga and mm -hmm. The Indelicate Balance. Mm -hmm. um, the other two movies are not canon films, hmm. but Inga as a character became very popular in that there was a movie called Made in Sweden. Um, oh, okay. That was basically like the babysitter softcore kind of thing that was a canon film that we'll eventually see. Okay. And the lead character's sure. name was Inga. And Josana went on to direct Deep Throat Part 2, speaking of hey. the popularity of Deep Throat. Well, there you go. Yeah. All full circle. <laughs> awful circle? All full circle. Yep. An awful, awful circle. Yeah, I meant all full circle. All full circle. Yeah, not awful yeah. circle, but we'll go with it. I think that uh, sort of wraps up the study of Inga. Which is, so, that sounds like it's going to be the fourth movie. The Inga, oh, the is. seduction of Inga, the indelicate balance, and the study of Inga. That's when she goes to Harvard. That's exactly right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Way better and way more interesting and way more uh, valuable than I thought it would yes. be. Yes, so much more that we could delve into Yeah, uh, than, than I thought we were going to have. Yeah, I have a feeling this one's going to stick with me a lot longer than some of the others mm -hmm. in, in, in accordance to like what we're going to be working on and what we're going to try to do. Absolutely. Still hate Carl, though. <laughs> but I was going to track him down and have him be in the movie. Listen... Cast. No, I'm gonna be cast and cast and lassen. <laughs> um, I hate you. I know. <laughs> Not I as much as Carl, though. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we doing next week, AJ? Hey, we are actually going to be doing one of the canon movie tales. The first of nine canon mm, movie tales. So excited, canon canon. Yes, sir. Which one are we going to be doing? We are doing the Christopher Walken, <gasps> Jason Connery, aka Sean Connery's son. No, you're kidding AKA me. AKA what? Double O three and a half. <laughs> yes. Puss in Boots. Cool. Excited for that, man. Me too. Neat. All right, everybody. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at Creating Canon with two N's. It was was that clear enough? Yeah, I was. I knew exactly. <laughs> creating what you're Canon. You've already found us. You'll figure it out. 
Keep finding um, us, though. Keep, keep finding us. Keep please following God, us. Please, God, keep finding us. Oh, God, keep, like, <laughs> please find us. Find you, us. Can, you can also email us at creatingcanon at gmail.com with any uh, interesting movies we should check out. Or wink, wink. Thoughts about Inga? Yes. Anything that, uh, that you feel that is relevant or anything that we missed? Yeah, please, please let us know. And uh, to wrap it up, I'm AJ Hamilton. I'm Nick Pap. Oh, sorry, Dick Pappas. Thank you. Sorry. That's your porn name. Yeah. Actually, it's the street you were born on and your uh, your first pet, right? Oh my God, isn't it? So then I would be okay. Socrates Sugar Bear. <laughs> Socrates Sugar Bear. All right. And you would be? I would be Alma Sunny. Alma Sunny. Mm-hmm. That is that is a church going lady. Oh yes, oh yes, um, she from is from Alabama. Alma Sunny. Alma Sunny. It might actually be switched. It might be Sunny Alma. It might be your pet and then your street name. But it, it doesn't be matter. Sugar Bear Socrates. Which I think is that's actually so much better. Sugar Bear Socrates. Sugar Bear Socrates. <laughs> Damn you! That's a, that's too good. Yes, yes, I philosophize about sex. <laughs> and on that note, Sugar Bear Socrates. I would. Good night and good God. Good <laughs> cannon. Oh, God. Good night and good cannon. All right. What are we doing? Um, A movie? Yeah. Some sort of movie. Somebody See, the, once told me. Somebody the world once was told me. The world was going to. I don't know. Roll me, probably. Uh, is he Italian? <laughs> <laughs> Where did my mind go? What were we? Well, Fellini so, or some shit? No, no, no.